Hi everyone, I'm back from my week off with another DIY video and it's another Harry Potter themed DIY video at that. So a couple years ago I made a pair of wands for me and my partner using some cooking chopsticks and polymer clay and I've never been very happy with them. They're very chunky and they remind me a lot of those resin replicas that they sell which just don't have that wood texture that I'm looking for. So after researching wood carving a little I decided to get another pair of cooking chopsticks and to carve my own wands this time so that they just feel and look a lot more realistic to me. So. First I had to design them. I made a big list of existing ones as you can see on screen and I and my partner just rated them all out of 10. Then when we had our top 5 I asked him, well what is it you like about that design? Or for the lower rated ones, what can't you stand about that design? And that gave me an idea of what direction to go. Then I took the definitions for the one woods and cores from Pottermore. For reference, if you're a nerd like me, Ryan, my partner's wand, is laurel wood and dragon heartstring 12 and a half inches, and mine is hawthorn and unicorn hair 11 inches. And I did a little research into how that wood looks, how the trees look, a bit of the history of them, and used that to sketch out some proposed designs. It was a little easier to do mine in some ways because I know what I like, but I sketched a few variants for Ryan so that he could choose what parts he liked of each. I got lucky though because the first sketch that I did was exactly what he wanted, so I just used that as my guide. So the first thing I did was mark on the chopsticks the total length and then mark where certain features would be. To work out the handle on Ryan's wand, I used my hand and a quarter inch to inform that length and then I marked on where little details would be going to. I feel pretty lucky because we both wanted very different types of wands. He preferred that very polished looking style with a clearly visible handle on it and I wanted the I just snap this off a branch kind of look. So hopefully this guide will give you a glance at two opposite directions that you can take with your own wands. At first I thought I would just begin carving and cut them down to length at the end, but as you'll see I decided to trim it down early on because when you're carving you really need to have a good grip on the wood and as these are pretty thin and long to start with <laughs> I just kept catching my forearm so I trimmed it down quite quickly. To do that you just take your knife and if you're poor like me a small scrap knife will work fine plus you can snap it off if it becomes blunt which is what the wood is definitely going to do to it and I use the knife to score around the wood at that point and when the indent was a few millimetres deep I just applied pressure either side to snap it in half. So these are bamboo chopsticks for reference so this worked fine for me. I've worked with bamboo a little bit in the past making architectural models so I felt pretty sure how much pressure and depth I'd need but I would say if you're unsure just keep cutting down to the core. Don't snap it off too early or you could just fracture the whole of your chopstick. Just take your time as frustrating as that can be. So now it's chopped down you can begin carving. I started with mine as I wanted it to look all rough and natural anyway, so if I messed up it would just look intentional. <laughs> Sorry if it gets blurry at times, but the way that you carve is you hold the knife securely in your right hand and then with your left hand use your left thumb to gently push the back of the blade. Obviously reverse this all if you're left handed. The idea is lots of little shallow cuts rather than large chunks at a time. That way you can manage the blade a lot safer and by cutting away from yourself you're always going to be safe. This was my first time carving and I didn't cut myself once which is a miracle as I'm prone to injuries <laughs> so I would recommend this slow and steady death by a million cuts style of carving. Yeah it is time consuming but I feel like when you see the end result and you compare it to what I think was about six hours total to make, it doesn't feel that long and arduous a DIY in reality. And just slowly rotate the chopstick and gently cut it into shape. I wanted my wand to feel good in the hand, so I was spinning it around and cutting constantly to get a nice smooth overall shape. I just used a little bit of sandpaper to soften some parts, but in general I tried to keep it quite roughly cut. With Ryan's wand however, the carving was less difficult in some ways and more so in others. In general the overall shape was right, but as it was a chopstick it didn't, I didn't really want the end to be flat and the gradient down went a bit too fat to thin. I just wanted it to look overall more uniform so I did some long shallow cuts down the length of the wand and smoothed that over with some sandpaper. 
I always went with the grain of the wood because it's a lot easier to cut and later when painting it's going to keep the natural grain of the wood visible. The hardest part of Ryan's one when carving were the little indents where I was going to add the brass later. I had to score the wood like I did when I was cutting it down to length and then using some very shallow cuts chisel out the wood between those two scored lines. Also I designed this almost button like end <laughs> to that wand which I overestimated my ability a little bit. I had to chisel this down too and that was lots of little cuts at an angle. I'm glad I got the practice early on with my gnarly looking wand when it came to this point. If you're looking to do something this little and intricate, I would be tempted to say get yourself a spare chopstick just to mess about with. Just chisel it, cut it, sand it, try all these methods out beforehand so that you're ready when you have to do your final fiddly product. Once I was happy with how they looked, I just painted them. When I did the last set of ones that I wasn't happy with, I used an acrylic paint and I think this added to the plasticky appearance that they had in the end. It's just too smooth and it hid the grain of the wood too well. So this time I decided to mix watercolour and very watered down gouache just together and make a very light coloured versions of the end colour I was going for. So for example with Ryan's wand I wanted a darker red colour but I saw with this light red watered down paint. I learned this back from when I made tiny animal crossing characters in clay but you're always best when painting on an odd surface to add a very thin layer of paint first for the rest of your paint to hold onto. And once both had a thin primed layer on them I could then add another thin wash over in a darker shade and just continue to build up that colour slowly. If your stain is thin enough, the cuts that you made earlier will be pulled into a very slight relief and you'll see this lovely grain of the wood which I personally just think looks a lot nicer. And when you hold it, it still has that feeling of wood and not glossy paint. And with it being thin, when it came to my own rougher styled wand, I could do a very thin dry brush of some light and dark shades of paint. Just to put some of those deeper cuts into relief without it looking all flat and manufactured, you're just highlighting the texture that you've already created. And now for the hardest part of the DIY. <sighs> I've had some brass sheets in my craft box for years now. I used to use this stuff a fair amount back when I was in uni. I really liked using copper in my buildings, so most of my models included brass. And I think I forgot what a pain in the bum it is when I included this in the design of Ryan's wand. I always liked how his wand was laurel wood because he studied history and I've listened to a hell of a lot of Roman history over this last decade with him. So I wanted to include that laurel leaf motif because of that Roman link. And including metal into the wand, it, it just had that polished look that I knew he preferred. So anyway, I made a rod for my own back and what you're seeing is a heavily edited down version of what I ended up doing. This was my successful attempt. So what you do is you need to cut down a strip of brass. I measured it using the cut that I'd already made from the wood rather than measuring an exact length. It's a bit thinner than the actual indent to make sure it fitted. And then add some super glue to the end. It's the only type of glue that's going to be strong enough to hold this brass onto the wood and cut the plastic part of a q-tip at an angle and you can use that then to press the brass into the cut out section. This is so fiddly and small that I did have to use my fingers at times and deal with the super glue that got stuck to them later. When it's stuck, wrap it tightly around the wand and use a little bit more super glue to attach the end. Don't worry about the super glue being visible or getting onto your wood. If this happens, just use your knife again or some sandpaper or even just the angled q-tip that you've now got to scratch away the dried super glue. If it does get onto your hands like me, here's my Urawaza. Put a little bit of soap and hot water onto your hands and then add salt and rub your hands together. It's a bit of a harsh exfoliation but the salt crystals will take that layer of super glue off your hands. It may take a few washes but it always works for me and I had to use that tip a lot to do this part. <laughs> And for those bloody laurel leaves, I cut another strip of brass and I folded it into a concertina and I cut the leaf shape from that folded brass. That way I had a few leaves to choose from in the end and when I messed up I had more to work with. Again, I glued those on with super glue and that q-tip and sanded off the excess glue to get it looking clean afterwards. You might want to add more of your thin stain afterwards too just to keep it all looking uniform on the paint where you've sanded. And for my wand I wanted some moss and lychee to be growing on it because I know this is going to sound odd but I love photographing moss when we visit forests. I just love the colour and the feeling of it 
and it just makes me think of the Lake District and just wet trees and I don't know, it just, it just means a lot to me I guess in a weird way. So to create it I used my knife again to cut thin shavings of polymer clay and I baked them in the oven for 5 minutes. They don't need very long as they're so thin and small. And then using some wood glue that I have, I dabbed that onto the part of the one that I wanted to add the clay and drop the shavings onto it. I didn't really want to press them in or try and shape them too much so that they kept that more natural appearance. I then used, again this is another been in my craft bin since architecture school kind of item, some fake grass which I got from a hobby shop for train enthusiasts. <laughs> There's not many of those and uh, I'm pretty sure you can get this on eBay too for probably a quid or two you'll get a lifetime's amount as you can see. <laughs> well unless you're a train enthusiast I guess. Anyway I sprinkled this over some glue as if it were glitter and I let it all clump up and did this a few times just to get a nice coating. And they're done! I can't express how much happier I am with these than I was the previous pair I'd made. They just both feel and look a lot more like a real life wand. But to finish it off, I wanted to create a little display stand for them. One day I'd like to attach these to the wall by the front door. Like, here's where I drop my keys, here's my change, here's my wand at the end of the day. I love the idea of just making it look almost mundane. I think that would add to the appearance of it being like, oh, we're a real life witch and wizard if a kid were to see it. <laughs> That's all I want, to trick children. <laughs> But honestly, how magical would it look if you were a little kid? They look pretty magical to me and I'm a grown adult who made them. <laughs> so to make this stand, I went to Trusty eBay again and I didn't mention but that's where I got those cooking chopsticks too. I'll include links to everything and a material list down in the description for you. And I got this little wall plaque. I wanted it to be small so that the ones extended beyond the length of it and that was just my personal preference. I considered using brass again to make little name plaques like you see in those fancy displays for the replica ones, but then I kind of felt like, well if they are mine and Ryan's and they're in our house, why would we have our names on it? It, it just seemed a little odd to me so I decided to just add a little bit of detailing and keep them simple. I also added a set of two brass effect cup hooks from Woolco's. You can get a pack of six for a quid and you just need to screw them in as you prefer. And now it is actually finished. And god I love it. I know it might sound a bit braggy but I am proud of how these turned out. I've been putting off trying this wood carving idea for ones for a couple years now as I just didn't expect I could get it to look how I wanted it to but I feel like I matched my sketches pretty closely and they just feel real which is all I really wanted. Only trouble is now I know the rest of my family's wand types and I just want to go order a load of chopsticks and make even more of them. I also love the idea of say if I ever had kids and making one of these for them and then I could hang them there too. I think that would be very special to have your own like handmade wand as a kid. I know I would have loved that. So if you're even somewhat interested in making one of these ones for yourself or someone else, I couldn't recommend doing it more. I've also added that sheet that I made for rating the existing ones if you'd like to use it to help you design a wand for yourself or someone else. And if you have any questions along the way or if you make one of these ones, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments or you can tag me over on Instagram so that I can see. Links for everything will be in the description. I really hope that you enjoyed this week's video and I'll see you all again next Thursday. Have a wonderful week.